Wang Jingwei, Wang Qingwei, the 4th of May 1883 to the 10th of November 1944, born as Wang Jiaoming, Wang Chaoming, but widely known by his pen name Jingwei, was a Chinese politician. He was initially a member of the left wing of the Kuomintang (KMT), leading a government in Wuhan in opposition to the right-wing government, but later became increasingly anti-communist after his efforts to collaborate with the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) ended in political failure. His political orientation veered sharply to the right later in his career after he joined the Japanese. Wang was a close associate of Sun Yat-sen for the last 20 years of Sun's life. After Sun's death Wang engaged in a political struggle with Chiang Kai-shek for control over the Kuomintang, but lost. Wang remained inside the Kuomintang, but continued to have disagreements with Chiang until the outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937, after which he accepted an invitation from the Japanese Empire to form a Japanese-supported collaborationist government in Nanjing. Wang served as the head of state for this Japanese puppet government until he died, shortly before the end of World War II. Although he is still regarded as an important contributor in the Xinhai Revolution, his collaboration with Imperial Japan is a subject of academic debate, and the typical narratives often regard him as a traitor in the War of Resistance. <laughs> Early life and education Born in Sanshui, Guangdong, but of Zhejiang origin, Wang went to Japan as an international student sponsored by the Qing dynasty government in 1903, and joined the Tongmenghui in 1905. As a young man, Wang came to blame the Qing dynasty for holding China back, and making it too weak to fight off exploitation by Western imperialist powers. While in Japan, Wang became a close confidant of Sun Yat-sen, and would later go on to become one of the most important members of the early Kuomintang. He was among the Chinese nationalists in Japan who were influenced by Russian anarchism, and published a number of articles in journals edited by Zhang Renji, Wu Jiawei, and the group of Chinese anarchists in Paris. <laughs> Early career In the years leading up to the Xinhai Revolution in 1911, Wang was active in opposing the Qing government. Wang gained prominence during this period as an excellent public speaker and a staunch advocate of Chinese nationalism. He was jailed for plotting an assassination of the regent, Prince Chun, and readily admitted his guilt at trial. He remained in jail from 1910 until the Wuchang uprising the next year, and became something of a national hero upon his release. During and after the Xinhai Revolution, Wang's political life was defined by his opposition to Western imperialism. In the early 1920s, he held several posts in Sun Yat-sen's revolutionary government in Guangzhou, and was the only member of Sun's inner circle to accompany him on trips outside of Kuomintang KMT held territory in the months immediately preceding Sun's death. He is believed by many to have drafted Sun's will during the short period before Sun's death, in the winter of 1925. He was considered one of the main contenders to replace Sun as leader of the KMT, but eventually lost control of the party and army to Chiang Kai-shek. Wang had clearly lost control of the KMT by 1926, when, following the Zhongshan warship incident, Chiang successfully sent Wang and his family to vacation in Europe. It was important for Chiang to have Wang away from Guangdong while Chiang was in the process of expelling communists from the KMT because Wang was then the leader of the left wing of the KMT, notably sympathetic to communists and communism, and may have opposed Chiang if he had remained in China. <inaudible> <inaudible> Rivalry with Chiang Kai-shek Topic. Leader of the Wuhan government During the Northern Expedition, Wang was the leading figure in the left-leaning faction of the KMT that called for continued cooperation with the Chinese Communist Party. Although Wang collaborated closely with Chinese Communists in Wuhan, he was philosophically opposed to communism and regarded the KMT's Comintern advisors with suspicion. He did not believe that communists could be true patriots or true Chinese nationalists. In early 1927, shortly before Chiang captured Shanghai and moved the capital to Nanjing, Wang's faction declared the capital of the republic to be Wuhan. 
While attempting to direct the government from Wuhan, Wang was notable for his close collaboration with leading communist figures, including Mao Zedong, Chen Dushou, and Baradin, and for his faction's provocative land reform policies. Wang later blamed the failure of his Wuhan government on its excessive adoption of communist agendas. Wang's regime was opposed by Chiang Kai-shek, who was in the midst of a bloody purge of communists in Shanghai and was calling for a push farther north. The separation between the governments of Wang and Chiang are known as the Ninghan Separation. Simplified Chinese, Ninghan Fenlai traditional Chinese, Ninghan Fenlai pinyin, Ninghan Fenli, Chiang Kai-shek occupied Shanghai in April 1927, and began a bloody suppression of suspected communists known as the White Terror. Within several weeks of Chiang's suppression of communists in Shanghai, Wang's leftist government was attacked by a KMT-aligned warlord and disintegrated, leaving Chiang as the sole legitimate leader of the republic. KMT troops occupying territories formerly controlled by Wang conducted massacres of suspected communists in those areas. Around Changsha alone, over 10,000 people were killed in a single 20 day period. Fearing retribution as a communist sympathizer, Wang publicly claimed allegiance to Chang and fled to Europe. <laughs> Political activities in Chiang's government Between 1929 and 1930, Wang collaborated with Feng Yuxiang and Yan Qishan to form a central government in opposition to the one headed by Chiang. Wang took part in a conference hosted by Yan to draft a new constitution, and was to serve as the prime minister under Yan, who would be president. Wang's attempts to aid Yan's government ended when Chiang defeated the alliance in the Central Plains War. In 1931, Wang joined another anti-Chiang government in Guangzhou. After Chiang defeated this regime, Wang reconciled with Chiang's Nanjing government and held prominent posts for most of the decade. Wang was appointed premier just as the Battle of Shanghai 1932 began. He had frequent disputes with Chiang and would resign in protest several times only to have his resignation rescinded. As a result of these power struggles within the KMT, Wang was forced to spend much of his time in exile. He traveled to Germany, and maintained some contact with Adolf Hitler. As the leader of the Kuomintang's left-wing faction and a man who had been closely associated with Dr. Sun, Chang wanted Wang as premier both to protect the progressive reputation of his government which was waging a civil war with the communists and a shield for protecting his government from widespread public criticism of Chiang's policy of first internal pacification, then external resistance, i.e. first defeat the communists, then confront Japan. Despite the fact that Wang and Chang disliked and distrusted each other, Chang was prepared to make compromises to keep Wang on as premier. In regards to Japan, Wang and Chang differed in that Wang was extremely pessimistic about China's ability to win the coming war with Japan which almost everyone in 1930s China regarded as inevitable and was opposed to alliances with any foreign powers should the war come. While being opposed to any effort at this time to subordinate China to Japan, Wang also saw the white powers, like the Soviet Union, Britain and the United States as equal if not greater dangers to China, insisting that China had to defeat Japan solely by its own efforts if the Chinese were to hope to maintain their independence. But at the same time, Wang's belief that China was too economically backward at present to win a war against a Japan which had been aggressively modernizing since the Meiji Restoration of 1867 made him the advocate of avoiding war with Japan at almost any cost and trying to negotiate some sort of an agreement with Japan which would preserve China's independence. Chang by contrast believed that if his modernization program was given enough time, China would win the coming war and that if the war came before his modernization plans were complete, he was willing to ally with any foreign power to defeat Japan even including the Soviet Union, which was supporting the Chinese communists in the civil war. Chang was a much more of a hard-line anti-communist than was Wang, but Chang was also a self-proclaimed realist, who was willing if necessary to have an alliance with the Soviet Union. Through in the short run, Wang and Chang agreed on the policy of first internal pacification, then external resistance. In the long run they differed as Wang was more of an appeaser while Chang just wanted to buy time to modernize China for the coming war. The effectiveness of the KMT was constantly hindered by leadership and personal struggles, such as that between Wang and Chang. In December 1935, Wang permanently left the premiership after being seriously wounded during an assassination attempt a month earlier. 
In 1936, Wang clashed with Chiang over foreign policy. In an ironic role reversal, the left-wing progressive Wang argued for accepting the German-Japanese offer of having China sign the Anti-Comintern Pact while the right-wing reactionary Chiang wanted a rapprochement with the Soviet Union. During the 1936 Xi'an incident, in which Chiang was taken prisoner by his own general, Zhang Shuiliang, Wang favored sending a punitive expedition to attack Zhang. He was apparently ready to march on Zhang, but Chiang's wife, Sung Mei Ling, and brother-in-law, T.V. Sung, feared that such an action would lead to Chiang's death and his replacement by Wang, so they successfully opposed this action. Wang accompanied the government on its retreat to Chongqing during the Second Sino-Japanese War 1937 During this time, he organized some right-wing groups under European fascist lines inside the KMT. Wang was originally part of the pro-war group, but, after the Japanese were successful in occupying large areas of coastal China, Wang became known for his pessimistic view on China's chances in the war against Japan. He often voiced defeatist opinions in KMT staff meetings, and continued to express his view that Western imperialism was the greater danger to China, much to the chagrin of his associates. Wang believed that China needed to reach a negotiated settlement with Japan so that Asia could resist Western powers. Alliance with the Axis powers In late 1938, Wang left Chongqing for Hanoi, French Indochina, where he stayed for three months and announced his support for a negotiated settlement with the Japanese. During this time, he was wounded in an assassination attempt by KMT agents. Wang then flew to Shanghai, where he entered negotiations with Japanese authorities. The Japanese invasion had given him the opportunity he had long sought to establish a new government outside of Chiang Kai-shek's control. On 30 March 1940, Wang became the head of state of what came to be known as the Reorganized National Government of China based in Nanjing, serving as the president of the Executive Yuan and chairman of the National Government in November 1940, Wang's government signed the Sino-Japanese Treaty with the Japanese, a document that has been compared with Japan's 21 demands for its broad political, military, and economic concessions. In June 1941, Wang gave a public radio address from Tokyo in which he praised Japan, affirmed China's submission to it, criticized the Kuomintang government, and pledged to work with the Empire of Japan to resist communism and Western imperialism. Wang continued to orchestrate politics within his regime in concert with Chiang's international relationship with foreign powers, seizing the French concession and the international settlement of Shanghai in 1943. After Western nations agreed by consensus to abolish extraterritoriality, the government of national salvation of the collaborationist Republic of China, which Wang headed, was established on the three principles of pan Asianism, anti communism, and opposition to Chiang Kai shek. Wang continued to maintain his contacts with German Nazis and Italian fascists he had established while in exile. Topic: <laughs> Death. In March 1944, Wang left for Japan to undergo medical treatment for the wound left by an assassination attempt in 1939. He died in Nagoya on 10 November 1944, less than a year before Japan's surrender to the Allies, thus avoiding a trial for treason. Many of his senior followers who lived to see the end of the war were executed. Wang was buried in Nanjing near the Sun Yat-sen Mausoleum, in an elaborately constructed tomb. Soon after Japan's defeat, the Kuomintang government under Chiang Kai-shek moved its capital back to Nanjing, destroyed Wang's tomb, and burned the body. Today, the site is commemorated with a small pavilion that notes Wang as a traitor. Despite the notoriety added to his name, Wang's contributions to the Xinhai Revolution, efforts to mediate the Communist Party with the Nationalist Party in post imperial China, academics continue to discuss on whether or not he should be completely condemned as a traitor, as it is always a subject of conversation that he worked with the Japanese as way of salvation for his countrymen in a desperate situation. Legacy For his role in the Pacific War, Wang has been considered a traitor by most post-World War II Chinese historians in both Taiwan and mainland China. His name has become a byword for traitor or 
treason in mainland China and Taiwan, similarly to Quisling in Europe or Benedict Arnold in the United States. The mainland's communist government despised Wang not only for his collaboration with the Japanese, but also for his anti-communism, while the KMT downplayed his anti-communism and emphasized his collaboration and betrayal of Chiang Kai-shek. The communists also used his ties with the KMT to demonstrate what they saw as the duplicitous, treasonous nature of the KMT. Both sides downplayed his earlier association with Sun Yat-sen because of his eventual collaboration. Personal life Wang was married to Chen Bijun and had six children with her, five of whom survived into adulthood. Of those who survived into adulthood, Wang's eldest son, Wenjin, was born in France in 1913. Wang's eldest daughter, Wenxing, was born in France in 1915, after 1948 was a teacher in Hong Kong, retired to the U.S. in 1984 and died in 2015. Wang's second daughter, Wang Wenbin, was born in 1920. Wang's third daughter, Wenxuan, was born in Guangzhou in 1922, and died in 2002 in Hong Kong. Wang's second son, Wenti, was born in 1928, and was sentenced in 1946 to imprisonment for being a Hanjin. See also Huang Yiguang, and his assassination attempt on Wang Jingwei Benedict Arnold Vidkin Quisling